Welcome, everyone. I'm Lee Merriweather, and with me is Todd Orston. Todd and I are partners at the law firm of Merriweather & Tharp, and you're listening to Merriweather & Tharp Radio on the new Talk 106.7. Here you'll learn about divorce, family law, tips on how to save your marriage if it's in the middle of a crisis, and even from time to time, even tips on how to take your marriage to the next level. If you want to read more about us, you can always check us out online at AtlantaDivorceTeam.com. Well, Todd, are we ready to dive into it? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start asking different questions. <laughs> yes, I'm absolutely ready. Uh, last week we we did do a, a deep dive on prenuptial agreements, and uh, and we realized that we scratched the surface. But there's more we can talk about to mm-hmm. really provide people with the information they need to understand Georgia and how prenups uh, can be drafted and and enforced in this state. Uh, and, and today we're going to go about that in an interesting way. Yep. So we went on, we have gathered information from different sources online about uh, what we think that the facts, we're not, we're not swearing by the facts of this, of what we've discovered, but different celebrities, the kind of prenups that were entered into, the ones that were enforced, the ones that weren't enforced and why they weren't enforced. Because in the last show we talked about how, you know, every case became very, very factually uh, dependent. Uh, the facts make all the difference. And so we figured let's pull out some facts from some cases. It's obviously more entertaining to use celebrities because often the numbers we're talking about are they're almost difficult to comprehend sometimes. But it's it's definitely entertaining and informative all at the same time. I, I probably should add this too. like some of our shows. I call them evergreen shows, meaning they're always going to be good. You could listen to them five years from now, and the information is still going to be good. The shows when we start talking about the get very specific on the law, like prenups, that was a good the one we did a couple weeks ago, child support, that not so much. So if you're listening to this and it's <laughs> – <laughs> At some it's, point, it's really not going to be good. <laughs> no, but, so the point being the law changes. Oh, got it. The got law it. changes. So – you know, if you're listening to this and, you, and you're going to get some good information, but double check with a lawyer before right. you do anything on your own because the law may have changed since the time we did this show. Yeah, and to your point, the uh, examples we're going to use, we are taking this information from online. Uh, we do not represent these people. We don't know and cannot say whether or not the facts are true and correct. Uh, but this is the information that is out there that's been reported and we are using them as meaning the the facts and and these different situations we're using them as educational tools yes. so um so obviously if uh there are any legal representatives for any of these famous people um please don't sue us <laughs> and uh i can't say whether or not uh you know uh, any of the like these stories that we, I know, I know, well, especially when we say we're not, we're not yes. representing out that these, this is the fact. So. Absolutely. So now oh. let's start saying some bad things about some of these famous people. <laughs> so the, the one, the first one I want to start with is it's current. It's, it's going on right now. It's Natalie Maines and one of the lead singers from the Dixie Chicks. If y'all remember who they were, they were really hot in the late nineties. Um, and then, she is getting a divorce from her actor husband, Adrian Pasdar. And uh, if you know, I didn't recognize the name at first, but when I started looking up what he'd been in, I, then I knew who he was. But like, for instance, I think the most recent thing that I, I've, I've seen him in was he was General Talbot, Talbert in um, uh, Marvel. Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. So, uh, he, and what's really interesting about this one is, you know, he's had a long career. His career actually started, I think, in 1982. Was that when Top Gun came out? Uh, I'm not sure. I, it... I, I like the movie, but... Uh, Maybe it was 86. I, mean, I still have a poster of, uh, you know, Tom <laughs> playing volleyball up in my room, but... <laughs> okay. Oh, guys. Oh. <laughs> All right, no, I don't. Uh, I... Maybe it was 86, but he was chipper, I think, is who it was in Top Gun. So he's been around. He's for a been while. around the block. He uh, so so. This is one of those situations where, when they got married, mm-hmm. they both that. had careers. Right. Uh, actually, he might have been. Uh, I'm not exactly sure in terms of when they got married. Where 2000. They got married so right in 2000. around 2000. Okay. So I don't know if the Dixie Chicks had made it. They had actually. Big, so they like, had, they were 
they had just broken through, I think, in 1998 and 1999. They had had, I've looked this up, I don't sure. know. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a Dixie Chick fan. Not sure. That I yeah. Their music's bad or anything, but it's. You were singing the songs <laughs> all the way into the studio. So, yeah. Keep. So, 98, 99, they won a lot of uh, country music awards. So, okay. they had just gotten hot at this point in time. All right. And so they both had, the point is, they both had careers. Yep. He was acting, she was in music, mm-hmm. and they both v- knowingly, voluntarily entered into a prenuptial agreement. Yep. And what, you know, so, it uh, should be very, very simple. But about, I think he played, he was in Heroes, which was a right. top he hot was in show. Heroes. Around that time, so like his yep. career was, seemed like it was on the rise as well. Yeah, he's not somebody who was just he had one job as an actor, but right. he was back to waiting tables. I mean, mm-hmm. he was pursuing a it, a growing career and uh, and a successful career in acting. Uh, but they both entered into a prenup. Yep. Yet, it, it you know what should have been so, simple, right? Enforce the prenup. One of them doesn't want the prenup to be enforced. So now the case, I want to say she filed for divorce. She filed for it in 2017, and now it's 2019, and the case is still going on, and the court still has not ruled on the prenuptial because he has challenged it. And that's not here in Georgia. Yeah, this is in California. He has challenged the prenup under the claim that it is unconscionable, and uh, the basis of California apparently has a very sim- something similar to Georgia. But he says apparently he's his claim, as I understand it, is he's he owes two hundred thousand dollars and she's worth something like twenty five million. He he has high expenses. He has mm. very few assets to, uh, you know, with which to live. He has yeah. borrowed a bunch of money, and all the while she is worth millions. And right. so he is saying it is unconscionable, and it is it would be unfair and unreasonable to enforce this agreement. Uh, but I, I tell me if I'm wrong, isn't he also focusing more on the alimony side than the property division side? But he just changed, I think, right. recently in January. He changed his position to say we'll be okay with enforcing the property division, but I want sixty thousand dollars a month in spousal and child support. So do I. <laughs> I mean, if we're throwing requests out there, um, <laughs> Natalie, I'll take some of that also. I don't know if it so, works that way. So, it, it, um, and to oversimplify, I've actually read their prenup, uh, at least the one that's online, that purports to be their prenup. But they, what they did is they said neither of them would get royalties, so he can't get any of the royalties from her songs from Dixie Chicks or anything she does. He keeps the royalties for all his acting and no alimony. And then there was another interesting clause in there that said basically – there was nothing joint and that if they bought a house in their joint names and that if she contributed, let's say, because they have a $12 million house. So let's say she contributed 10 million. Doesn't everyone? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, did, I, <laughs> I threw you off there. I'm like, what kind yeah. of world would this be if everybody had to? Anyways. Yeah. Um, a lot of inflation. That would be. Uh, so she, if she put ten million in and he put two million in, all he'd get back is his two million. She'd get ten. All he'd get back is two million. She'd get her ten million. But the bottom line is, it was contemplated. It was, a, it was a contract they put in place, and apparently she did buy the house and paid for it. I think it's only in her name. Yep. Uh, so and she has a house in I guess Hawaii. That's her vacation home, and she paid for that too. So. Right. Uh, but so, the bottom line is that they entered into a mm-hmm. contractual agreement, a prenuptial agreement mm-hmm. that contemplated the fa- you know based on the fact that they both had and were pursuing their careers. It dealt with alimony. It dealt with property division, debt division. I mean, it dealt with all of these things. But he is now coming back in, and he is saying he's not fair. Oh, by the way, it, it's actually fifty million. He's claiming she's worth not twenty five. Does okay. that change it? Not even a little bit for me. <laughs> if you didn't want to be bound by an agreement, you shouldn't have entered into the agreement. So he's claiming he only makes a only yeah. makes one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year now. Now, what's interesting is the year prior, he made just over four hundred thousand dollars. So not so shabby. Um, it's not fifty million, but no. that's a nice living. 
That's a yeah, four hundred thousand. Absolutely. But what I what you know, sometimes you sit back and go, well, hang on, what did you do with your money? Now I know it's very expensive there. So he moved out of their marital home and moved into. Uh, I can't remember where he moved, but he was renting a house, I believe, and it's like seven thousand a month. Seven thousand yeah, dollars, which month. in Los Angeles, yeah, I think it was someplace. Absolutely, on the, it's an apartment. It's not even a house. It's oh, an really? apartment. That's seven thousand dollars. I still don't doubt month. it. And um, it was some on some beach, so maybe he could have done something a little less expensive. But all right, so up next, we're going to continue to dive down, dive into what Mister Pastar has done. And uh, talk about the his argument, talk about the money, and see if he has a shot of throwing this prenup out. Welcome, everyone. I'm Lee Merriweather, and with me is Todd Orston. Todd and I are partners at the law firm of Merriweather and Tharp, and you're listening to Merriweather and Tharp Radio on the new Talk 1067. If you want to read more about us, you can always check us out online at AtlantaDivorceTeam.com. Well, this episode, we are talking about some celebrity prenup battles um, to sort of take a deeper dive using the examples of other cases to take a deeper dive into the concept of prenuptial agreements and what what is enforceable, what's not enforceable. We were actually going over a current one. Now, I don't know if there's been a judicial ruling since we did our research. There could have been. Um, and, but as of the last time I did the research, there had not been. We were talking about one of the D- former Dixie Chicks, Natalie Maines, and her husband, Adrian Pastar, filed. They they were, started their divorce in 2017. It is still going ongoing, and he is challenging the validity of a prenup he entered into with her in uh, in the year 2000. Now I'm going to throw some facts at Todd and see if judge Todd and see if it changes his opinion on whether, uh, the Mr. Pastar should, the court should ignore the prenup and, uh, give him some alimony. All right. So he says that, um, go to jail. <laughs> it's not a criminal no. case. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's why I never became a judge. I always get those mixed up. (laughs) Okay, so Pastar says he spends $20,717 a month in in, in expenses and only has like $2,500 in cash and bank accounts. Uh, He has borrowed to the tune of $200,000 from families. He's got loans of $68,000 from his family. He owes $130,000 from a line of credit. And owes a prior lawyer fifty two thousand uh, dollars. He, his position is that Natalie is extremely well, wealthy. She makes two million dollars a year. He has a net. She has a net worth of fifty million with two point six million dollars in liquid assets and property valued at four and a half million. So, um, Pastar believes that she'll make millions more this year when she goes on tour on her solo album. And so, during the course of the marriage. He, he's also claiming, Judge Todd, that he gave up on his, um, he gave up furthering his career to stay home with the kids so that she could go on tour with the Dixie Chicks. And so she, and that makes this enforcement unconscionable because he gave up his part of his career for her. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Still not uncomfortable. Look, when they entered into the agreement, I believe they both knew. He could have knocked it out of the park as an actor. Yeah. And he could have been the one making millions doing acting. Mm -hmm. Um, And I actually, I like him as an actor. Okay. So, and I've enjoyed watching him in, in different shows and movies and what have you. But he could have knocked it out of the park just as quickly as she did. And when they got married... She was on the way up. So it's yeah. not like she was playing dive bars. You yeah. know, she was winning awards at that time, and it was foreseeable that her career was going to keep, you know, g- getting better and she was going to make more money and yeah. all of that. So it was foreseeable. And the fact that he's living in probably one of the most expensive cities in the country, mm-hmm. paying a ridiculous amount of rent, moved to Georgia. 
Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, because rent, uh, 7000 plus dollars. Venice, California, that's yeah. where it is. So $7,000. $7, hey, move to Georgia, you know, $1,500. I will get you a beautiful place, okay, <laughs> and I'll buy you a picture of the ocean. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry that you have incurred debt. I'm sorry mm-hmm. that you have mismanaged your finances mm-hmm. to the extent that now you find yourself in debt, but that's on you. Yeah. And to me, if I'm the judge, I, I'm going to be hard pressed to basically void a contract because you have structured your finances in such a way that you are spending more than you earn. Right. Okay. You knew that a divorce could happen. And if it happened, a contract is already in place that would govern how finances are handled. And because you have made choices that have affected your income and affected your uh, assets, I don't think that it's fair that you should be looking to the judge, looking to a court to basically give you an out. Yeah. And I, you know, to follow up on that, I think I would agree with you if I were the judge. If she was really, because my understanding, she is paying, she paid the, the, the $12 million mansion she was paying for, the, the, the vacation home she was paying for. It sounds like she was paying for most of the expenses. Now, I don't know. I haven't seen this, the numbers, but it just sounds like that. Well, I think he what? even said that he bought, he spent a little bit on the kids and, you know, would, would pay a few things here and there. And right. I, all right. Going back to what you had talked about with, with, you know, the work that he's done, he was on Heroes. He was on Marvel he, Agents, yeah. uh, well, the, not only that, Agents but of he S.H.I.E.L.D. Has, he was a voice actor yeah. in a lot of different Marvel animated shows. What's interesting, actually, one of them, he was still making pretty good money from, at least. Does he work for ramen noodles? I mean, I don't understand. <laughs> well, how does he get paid? Um, you know, so. So, the, so he was in. Oh, I forgot. He was in Supergirl. He got 11. Last year, he got $11,000 for that. So Marvel Avengers Assemble, which is an animated show that came out, I think, that in 2013, he got a residual payment of $15,700 last year. Right. So, so so the bottom line is that he is working, you had said he's earlier, residual $400 plus thousand from- dollars at one point. So to me, again, if I'm the court, mm-hmm. I am hard-pressed to invalidate a legally binding contract are you getting all choked up? I know you get very emo- you get very emotional when we talk about these things. Um, I, that I'd be hard pressed to to void a contract just because he now is waking up X number of years later, thinking and saying it's unfair. Right? You know, finances are such that you know, and she makes so much and has so much money that it would be unfair to make me live the life of a mortal human. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, I, I want to keep living a life. I mean, and even the, the ask of $60,000 per month is a little bit offensive to me because I'm sitting here going, not only do you want to, it's not like he's coming to the court going, I need like five extra thousand dollars. I just need yeah. to pay a couple of bills. I'd still think it was wrong. I, I still wouldn't right. do it. But he's like, no, no, no. I still want to live in L.A. and, and live an L.A. lifestyle. Give me 60000 a month. But, you know, here's the thing. He could... I think, knowing the expenses of where he's living, he could make a very good argument that he should get a lot of child support because clearly if she's living in a $20 million home and he's living in an apartment, Absolutely. there is a disparity as far as uh, lifestyle for the children when they're visiting mom versus dad. And we've had a show on celebrity right? child support cases. Yeah. And in states like California, we have seen child support amounts if you're the primary and and. It almost sounds like he is going to be the primary. Anyways. Yeah, and that I don't know. If he's the primary, we have seen some California awards for, you know, in celebrity divorces that are ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. And that's, I'm, I'm going to put that soapbox away because I still, <laughs> I get angry. I get angry when I hear that. some of these numbers. Yeah. But 60000 80000 100 plus thousand dollars yeah. per month. Okay. That child better be wearing... I was going to say fur, but no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm anti fur. So, uh, but really, really nice things. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I agree with you. I think maybe child support, that, that's, that's a different story. Well, and he had, so during the course of his marriage, he could have done two different things. Uh, number one, if she's paying all the bills, every penny he earned should have been going in a bank account or investment account. In contemplation of the possibility that if at one, some point in time in the future, we get divorced. I have a nest egg. Yeah, I have exactly. some some money set aside. So, he didn't do that. Or or 
he could have gone to her and said, all right, you know what? We've got kids now. I want to support you in growing your career, but I'm going to have to sacrifice as a result. Can we modify I prenup to take that into account? And so maybe, uh, you know, your you know, your net worth is clearly more worth more than me right now. Can we have it where if we get a divorce, I get two million or something like that. so he could have had that conversation with her, said if I'm gonna give up my career, let's make an adjustment to our prenup. So you, and you that. and it's a contract that can be changed That's right. if the parties agree. And if you change it, it will have to be you have to still have to follow the same formalities of in in that case it'd be California's formality. So he had options, he just didn't act on them. And now he's he's an adult. He's fifty two years old actually. So and he's had attorneys. This isn't something where this was sprung on him. Mm-hmm. This was an agreement that he and and he deals in the business that he's in. He has attorneys that are writing contracts. He probably has a manager. He probably, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there, he is probably surrounded he an agent. An agent. Yeah. He is probably surrounded by people who can properly advise him, or at least put him in touch with the professionals who can help him with these things. So for him to say that he didn't know what questions to ask would be ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I think he loses. Guilty. Go to jail. <laughs> he's not going Still to jail. Not, okay, all right. <laughs> no, he's. Uh, I, I don't think he wins that. I think he's got to figure out a way to make some money and shift his. I think you just. He's costing himself a fortune by continuing to litigate this issue. I think he's better off. Well, that's an argument. On, I'm sorry. If I, that's her argument. That's she's, her argument. She's asking for attorney's fees. Yeah, because she's saying that this. this is from 2017, yeah. that he's dragging his feet on purpose. Yep. All right, so up next, we're going to talk about a few other celebrity cases, and we're going to analyze, did someone, did somebody ask someone that they couldn't exceed a certain weight limit during the course of their marriage? We're going to get into that next. Welcome, everyone. I'm Lee Merriweather, and with me is Todd Orson. Todd and I are partners at the law firm of Merriweather and Tharp, and you're listening to Mary Winter and Tharp Radio on the new Talk 106.7. If you want to read more about us, you can always check us out online in AtlantaDivorceTeam.com. Well, today we've been talking about, we're following up on our previous show about prenups, and we had fun here listening to Judge Todd rule against, uh, I think, Adrian Pastar, I think I'm saying his name right, uh, who is a, an actor who was trying to throw out a prenup from his wife, Natalie Maines, a former Dixie Chick singer. Am I saying that? Dixie Chicks was the name of the group. Uh, so anyways, we broke down his some of his arguments as we understood them. Obviously, we're not in the legal weeds on that case, but uh, he didn't stand a chance. So, <laughs> But we're going to continue to talk. I almost about- held him in contempt at one point. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna award um, you gonna award her attorney's fees? Oh, a lot. <laughs> he can't pay it. He owes two hundred thousand dollars. All right, good point. You know, he she might actually not get him because of that. I don't think she cares. Yeah, that's true. she's worth so much money. She just wants I mean, the divorce she, over. She wants this over. Yeah. I mean, and and out of principle, she may want fees. But I mean, I know if she was our client, we'd be looking at her going. Just let's get this done. Let's get this done. And and then you don't want to spend another month or so litigating on the issue of fees. All right. So now we're going to talk about what can and cannot go into uh, a post-nup. Um, we're going to analyze or pre-nup, post-nup, um, and the analysis is the same. But as we said in the last show, you can discuss things as far as division of your assets and liabilities and alimony. But in, really, and there's a few other things we're going to talk about in a minute but you cannot, well, it's not enforceable, anything dealing with child support or child custody. Because at the time you enter, first off, it's up, to, this court has the ultimate deciding, the ultimate, they're the ultimate decider when it comes to child custody and child support. That's number one. And number two, the, um, the something, standard. something and, and could all, change. Right. The standard is what's in the best interest of a child. Right. And, In year one, you may enter into uh, a prenup that says mom gets custody and dad pays uh, $1,000 in child support. Well, in year 10, when a divorce is going on, mom might be addicted to medication or might be, you know, just a really Mm -hmm. not great parent. And dad might not be making enough to pay that or might be making way, way, way more. And so... 
it wouldn't be reasonable to apply those terms at that point in time. Right. So those th- you can't include that. All right. right. But here's um, you can include certain lifestyle clauses. So uh, uh, and as- some of them are pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we <laughs> do this for a living. And reading some of the terms that have been included in some of these uh, individuals' prenuptial agreements are eye-opening. Yes. And so one of them, Keith Urban and Nicole Kidman, so they entered into agreement where, and this is really interesting, according to the the sources online, was that he gets $600,000 a year for every year the couple's together. And uh, I'm going to talk to my wife after this show because <laughs> if I can get those kinds of terms. <laughs> so Nicole Kidman apparently is worth about $150 million, so that's apparently not very much. But there is a clause in there that says that um, that he doesn't get anything from her if he uses illegal narcotics or drinks in an excessive amount. Now, that is an awfully vague clause. That, that's, yeah, the... Illegal narcotics. Let's let's flesh that out a little bit. The yeah. illegal narcotics. If she can prove that he used something that was illegal, yeah, and you can that's prove black that. white, that's right? Black I mean, that's yep. you know, hey, you used really. I mean, based on those terms, it could be marijuana, it uh-huh. could be cocaine, it could be anything that is an illegal narcotic. If she can get a blood sample, blood test, prove that he used it, boom. I mean, yep. she has the evidence that she needs. Drinking to excess. Mm-hmm. is vague and what we mean by that is one person's excess may not be another person's right. excess you know one person might say if you drink one beer you have drunk too much yeah while another person might be like i'm going on beer 19 and i'm still <laughs> i'm still good you know i haven't passed out yet yeah right so so it just depends and may, and that the was, definition of excessive. That was a summary. Maybe it was defined. And, it, and it, my guess is it probably was. You would think it would be. Yeah. But, um, but right. yeah, so that's that's a behavioral um, term or a term that is based on behavior that could trigger one thing or another or can, you know, create enforceable terms yes. or change enforceable terms based on if you engage in what I'm going to call bad behavior. Yeah, and I and I don't think there's anything really wrong with that per se. No. So let's look at Jessica Beale and Justin Timberlake. So apparently they were they had a lifestyle clause. Actually it's, it was a cheating clause. So she would get if she caught Justin Timberlake or someone caught him cheating on her, she would get five hundred thousand dollars right off the bat. So uh of course that's not very much she's at the time, he was supposedly worth about two hundred thirty million, but um, she—that's still an that's an expensive date. I mean, I'm not—that's—I'm <laughs> not going to lie. Half um, a million dollars. Yeah, I mean, I understand that he has a whole bunch of money, but that's that's one expensive night out. <laughs> yes. Uh, but but again, we're talking about behavior. Mm-hmm. Each party might, you know, uh, keep their own assets, whatever they earn, whatever. Or there are other terms that say you'll get X and I'll get Y. Mm-hmm. But here they are injecting behavior into the terms and saying, okay, but there's an exception here. Yeah, I'm going to be faithful to you. You're going to be faithful to me. But if you, the person who has $230 million, is unfaithful, there's a, there's, it's like a punishment clause. Yeah. There's a penalty. You will now pay me half a million dollars. Okay. So, and, <clears throat> all right. So, now here's what I... This is the funny one. So allegedly, <laughs> Jessica Simpson and Tony Romo. They, now they didn't get married, but they were talking about getting married. And uh, <laughs> allegedly, he tried to include a clause that said that Jessica Simpson could not be over 135 pounds during their marriage, and for every pound she gained over the 135, she would owe Romo five hundred thousand dollars of her profit. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and uh, what was there an exception to pregnancy? I, I, I'll be honest with you. I have to. I, I don't know to... what to assume. I was going to say I have to assume, but but when I hear terms like that, I don't know what to assume because it, that's pretty insane. I, I have a hard time believing this story is even true. Uh, yeah, and and but but then again, 
maybe they are that shallow. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, if he was looking for that trophy wife that uh, that weighed a certain amount and looked a certain way, maybe he's sitting here going, "Fine, you know." But you start <laughs> putting on the pounds, you know, Ooh. too many cheeseburgers, and you owe me some money. Oh man, um, I can't but imagine. And and you know what? The biggest surprise they didn't get married. Hmm. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine they got past the negotiation on those terms. You know, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. If I get fat, I dollars for every pound. Yeah. Okay. Wedding's off. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just wondering if he said that in joke or something. Or, but it just, it's, it's really hard. But, but here's the issue. We're talking about would that be a permissible term? Right. Would it be? Huh? All right. I, we could say it's ridiculous all day long, but arguably I would say, yeah. I mean, if you so want to. Just say, so you walk into court with a scale and say, all right. I mean, seriously. Miss Simpson, I need you to stand on the scale. Yeah, right. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, but, that would but be the, the bottom line is these kind of, you know, behavior or, or lifestyle kinds of terms. They, I mean, arguably, I don't, I don't see a huge problem. I'd be surprised at anybody if she would want to marry him yeah. after being told that she can't get fat. But um, but nonetheless, could it be included? Possibly. Yeah. All right. So Catherine Zeta-Jones and Michael Douglas also had a clause in their agreement. And supposedly that... Uh, anti-cheating. Anti-cheating clause as well. And he had... How much did he have to pay? Uh, th- that I'm not sure. I don't remember how much it was, but... Uh, Supposedly she got two point eight million dollars for every year they were married. I, I like I, I I've seen clauses where the party said, "Look, for the first ten ten years or fifteen years or twenty years of the marriage, I've seen all of those. Um, you know, we just keep our whatever we came in the marriage, we keep whatever we earned. Like if we uh, use our marital funds while we're married to buy things, that's still our separate property." But after year 10, 15, year 15, year 20, the, we tear up the prenup. It's no good anymore. So those, to me, make a little more sense a little bit. But, yeah, uh, but I could also see, especially when you're marrying somebody who is worth a lot and will probably, their their net worth will continue to grow, saying, if I'm married for one year, you pay this. Two years, right. pay that. You know, and that's it, an alternative, I guess. We do that all the time to make than, sure that there's fairness. Yeah. You know. If you're giving up alimony, I guess that would be fair, maybe. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious okay so up next we're going to continue to break down some more celebrity cases talk about some more prenups and you know cases where people are actually paying someone to stay married to them. I, I, I need it. Welcome, everyone. I'm Lee Merriweather, and with me is Todd Orson. Todd and I are partners at the law firm of Merriweather and Tharp, and you're listening to Merriweather and Tharp Radio on the new Talk 1067. If you want to read more about us, you can always check us out online at AtlantaDivorceTeam.com. All right. Well, we've been getting into prenups. We have been talking about, and we've actually been giving examples of celebrities and what they, how they have handled prenups, at least as we understand them. And uh, talking about some pretty odd clauses and whether they would be enforceable. Um, and, you know, <laughs> the one of the ones I thought was really strange was, so this allegedly Charlie Sheen and Brooke Mueller entered into prenup, and he was supposed to make payments to her during the marriage. And so just for marrying him, Mueller received $500,000 within 180 days of the wedding ceremony. And then she received an anniversary payment of $300,000 on the first 10 years of the marriage. If he failed to pay, she would start to get interest. You know, I, nothing says romance. Like, <laughs> honey, it's our anniversary. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, w- which one? You know, it's the one where you pay me $300,000 <laughs> and uh, interest will accrue. <laughs> um, yeah, and, uh, and I will say, for all these that were saying, you know, oh, my God, how ridiculous— Marrying Charlie Sheen, I think anyone would deserve hazard pay. So, so I can't. I, I actually can't say that one's unreasonable. Oh, it's just the thoughts of making payments during the course of the marriage. I, I yeah, that takes it to another level because, like I said, 
you, you want to suck the romance out of a relationship, it's uh, it's hey, honey, the money hasn't hit my account yet. Yeah. Um, that there's just something inherently wrong with that. But like I said, it is Charlie Sheen. But, so how about Elizabeth Taylor and Larry Fortensky? Oh, this is funny. Yeah, that is a funny one. Um, you know, in that one, it was uh, basically they signed a prenup saying Fortensky would receive a million dollars if the marriage lasted five years. Uh, and guess when they uh, they got divorced? Uh, five years in one day. Yeah, basically. That's <laughs> that's at least when it was filed. Um, yeah, surprise, surprise. So, and that was her eighth marriage. Yeah. Well, she's good at it. <laughs> she's good. I don't know if she's good. At, I don't know if she's good at the marrying or the divorcing, but she's good at something. Uh, you have to be good to do it that many times. I guess so. Um, and how, wait, let's talk about how about Steven Spielberg? And we mentioned this in our last show or hinted at it, but Steven Spielberg and Amy Irving, uh, and they were married and they were divorced. I want to say in the eighties, wasn't it? They were um, married in uh, nineteen eighty-five, and they're yeah. married in eighty-five, right? And in that case, that that's actually and he he left her for another actress. No, yeah. that happens in L.A. That was only four years later. Bite your tongue. I don't believe you. <laughs> um, so uh, in that situation, that was and and like I said, we mentioned it in the last show that they had a prenup, but Irving wanted it thrown out, probably because. She was married to Steven Spielberg, who <laughs> yeah. makes hit after hit after hit and is worth a gazillion dollars. And basically, the the firm that represented her got it thrown out because they explained that the prenup was written on the back of a cocktail napkin. <laughs> right. And so this goes to the formalities. Right. And whether or not all the formalities were met to make it an enforceable mm-hmm. agreement. And because it was done so informally they were able to convince a court not to enforce it. That's that's what we understand. So, And she actually got like $100 million, half his estate, for mar- be married to him for four years. I, I'd say it's, that, that was a good fight to fight. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, well worth the expense. And uh, anyway, so yeah, $100 million. Wow. Um, yeah. How about, talk to us about how about Katie Holmes and Tom Cruise? Ah, so this one, he entered, they had a um, agreement, a prenup. And it was pretty, it was pretty tight. So she didn't get a lump sum payout because uh, I guess they weren't married long enough. And what was interesting, so she didn't, she decided not to go for, um, to fight on the throwing out the prenup. Mm-hmm. I'm reading, I'm reading between yeah, yeah, the yeah, lines sure. here on his. And so instead, she decided to fight on the issue of child support, and she got $400,000 a month from Cruz for her child support until their child turned 18. No, keep talking, because I'm nauseous right now, <laughs> and and I don't I don't know if I can continue to talk. 400000 a month. Mm-hmm. 400000 yeah. a month. That's, yeah, that's what's reasonable. been reported. Well, he has solid, you know, the, the kids have solid goals like soccer cleats <laughs> and... <laughs> They eat lobster for breakfast. <laughs> He's supposedly worth two hundred fifty million. Now, if this was a case where there was a sunset clause, if they'd been married eleven years, then um, he they would have thrown out the prenup, and she would have gotten access to half of it. But and and she couldn't hold out for that long. No. All right. So, well, I mean, she went for the four hundred thousand dollars a month. Again, <laughs> nauseous. But uh, all right. All right. So. Let's talk about Tiger Woods and Ellen Nordigen. Nordigen? Definitely not that last one. Um, <laughs> Nordigen. Nordigen? Nordigen. All right. So uh, they got married. They had uh, an agreement. And basically, um, <laughs> he wrote, he ends up writing a, uh, as we uh, read it, a $5 million apology. Uh, she filed for divorce under the newly written document and basically this was an example of and wasn't it they had an agreement but then right. they actually renegotiated terms right so they adjusted the prenup and the, so we call it a and this is what you were saying in the last and right. uh, last show i believe yeah. um but basically that's what could have been done or maybe it was this show that was this show. it was this show yeah. right that th- that's what could have happened that basically he 
um, could have gone back to court and or uh, back to the drawing board and agreed to something different. Right here, they did wasn't enough to keep them together, and and so, basically she walked away with just a little bit of money. Yeah, originally she was only gonna only oh gosh I can't, only gonna get twenty million. But how since, do you live on that? I, So she got, because they renegotiated, and then she filed for divorce after apparently renegotiating it, she got $110 million. I would say that was an unfortunate renegotiation for Tiger. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think he thought that went through. Or he was thinking, anyway. So (laughs) Let's not go there. Yeah, let's not go there. Yeah. So, all right. Well, here's an interesting one. And we don't know the full details, but allegedly that Mark Zuckerberg and Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan had in their prenup date nights. So uh, apparently she included terms like, and I don't know if this is true, this is just what I read, was that um, they would need to have one date night per week, at least 100 minutes of alone time out of the apartment and away from his company so that... Um, so that I guess, to help their marriage stay solid. Well, so. and basically, it's a you're married to me, not your company, and right. I need to guarantee that uh, you know I'm actually going to have a husband. Yes, that, that is invested in us. Yeah. So, and that kind of behavior, you can throw that into an agreement. Mm-hmm. But as with any contract, you have to be very specific in your terms. Yeah. And in the intent of of that language. Because you can't be vague. You can't, if you, if you're vague, it's unenforceable. Right. All right. Or at least I'm you're not on sure the risk. There was any damages if they didn't. Yeah. You know, do that. But I mean, if if we take the sort of end this on a high note, and look at that as an example, you it the prenup process can be an opportunity to actually, I think, if you do it right, can to solidify your marriage and make it long. I mean, absolutely make it because the problem with a prenup is it makes your marriage very contractual. And so as soon as someone's not carrying their weight, it's just, you want to get out rather than being like a, com- a covenant, a commitment to the other person for your, your whole life. And that's one of my struggles, but the process of talking about, Hey, what do you look, what, what do you see our life like being to our life being together? Like, talking about, you know, where do you want to go? Where do you want to live? Where, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, what about kids? Do, are we going to have kids? You know, having that conversation about the, your future, because that's what the prenup is. It's a conversation about your future. It can yeah. set you up for success. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I agree 100% when you're talking about those types of terms like date night, right. okay, where, you know, it's very much about, okay, here are the rules by which we are going to live right. our lives as husband and wife. Mm-hmm. And then that be, it makes the relationship feel somewhat contractual. But the other terms that we're talking about, look, it, it, your assets are yours, my assets are mine, mm-hmm. and we're going to go our, our separate ways if we need to, and this is how we're going to divide everything. I don't think, you know, I look at it from the point of view of, you know, look, you're avoiding the fight. Yeah. And hopefully that takes some pressure away. You don't have to worry, huh, am I going to get taken to the cleaners? Yeah. Am I going to lose everything I've been working for? No, you've already contracted it all away. So now you can put that aside and focus on making it the best and healthiest relationship ever. You know what we can't put aside? We're done. <laughs> the, end of, the end of the show. <laughs> Wish we could keep talking, but unfortunately can't. Uh, we've run up against the, our time and we are out of time. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. This audio program does not establish an attorney-client relationship with Meriwether and Tharp.